realising the difference between the complete, the, ma the manic condition yeah. of um, denial of fear, den denial of, I'm sorry, it's hard for me yeah, okay. to say it simply. Yeah. My question is about happiness at the end of it. I don't truly know what happiness is because I go from this manic manifestation of the denial of the fear yep. and the complete opposite, which is in, so in the fear complete itself. surrender to the fear where I'm in so much pain, I don't think it's ever going to end. Mm -hmm. None of those extreme states are a state of happiness. Is there happiness at the end of it? so that you understand what it really is? Yeah, well I suppose the thing, the thing is that most of you often have commented to me about how happy I'm mo I am most of the time, right? And the only way that I've become the way I am is by dealing with all of these emotions, to deal with all this grief and all this fear and I've had lots and lots of it to deal with. So my, I can say categorically to you that you'll definitely come out of it if you process the fear and don't live in it. What you say is that what you raise though is a very good point and that is that there are two extremes to our fear processing that we may experience. One is like a manic, a manic laughter and the other is like a really you know, terrified place. And the truth is that often we need to go through the experience of both of those extremes when we are experiencing our fears. The key is to ask yourself whether you're using the laughter to avoid or whether, you're using, where, whether it is a childhood expression. Because in the end, all of our fear is usually from our childhood. So it will be childlike in the way it's expressed. And this is where a lot of men who think they're not afraid use a lot of jokes in their life. Yeah. And you'll see that happening quite a lot. Now, often those men are full of fear, but are using jokes or in adult intellectual joy, if you like, to cover over their fears. When you're though in this manic phase where, where you're laughing and you're feeling afraid, sometimes it's actually a feeling of excitement. And what happens when we have fear in us is we cannot differentiate between excitement and fear. Now many of you currently are in that state where you can't actually easily identify what it means to be excited compared with what it means to be afraid. Now, I had this problem terribly. Like, I, every time I'd get slightly excited about something, I always felt that I was afraid, <laughs> and vice versa. If I got afraid, I'd think that I was excited, but really, I was terrified. And it took me processing through my fears to actually start to realise the difference between those two states. It's, you'll find that excitement is a very similar emotion to fear in, the, in, in its physiological response inside of you. And, and it often kicks off very similar chemical reactions inside of you as well. So the soul through its emotion experiences many chemical responses that are very similar. And so it's often very difficult to determine the difference between excitement and fear. So are you saying when you, when I feel afraid I often feel a sense of dread? When you were excited you felt dread? I felt dread, oh. yeah. Yeah, so it was really strange. I, like I, I would feel excited but then I'd feel dread, like what's going to happen next? And there was a combination of my fear and my excitement and because of very, very similar emotions, physiologically you'd feel them in a very similar way. The heart starts, you know, when you're excited, the heart beats faster too when you're excited, doesn't it? And all of those kind of things start happening and, and so you start to not be able to tell the difference between those two sets of emotions. But you will need to experience often both fluctuations, the manic sort of laughter, right, which is a very childlike state, right down to the, the fear and terror, in, in a childlike state, to, and, and allow yourself to go through it. If you're in pain with it, then often it's because you're still not getting to the bottom of it. So that's the thing to just, oh, whenever I'm in pain, I just pray to God a lot about the pain, and I say to God, I know that I'm in denial of something here, I'd love to know what it is, you know. I'd love to know what it is even intellectually to work out and then, and then maybe I can work through it emotionally. Thank you. Yeah. My manic also manifests in busyness. Yes. If I sit still, I find I trigger fear re much more readily. The busier that I am, um, I just like stay the manic 
keeps me busy. Yeah. Busy in physically, but busy in my head too. The other issue that many face, and that you face, Jen, is that because you're spirit influence and you've got you know fairly open mediumistic uh, abilities. What happens is that spirits around you in certain states can easily be attracted as soon as there's any denial in your own state. So as soon as, as soon as you feel some pain, you know you're in denial of your own state, but at that point, many spirits can come around you and go whoosh around you, and sometimes you'll feel them like that, and then you'll go into like a manic laughter, and sometimes that's actually expressing their, their method of getting out of their fear. Does that make sense? And so the key is to every time you feel pain and every time you feel like you're getting out of the causal emotion, just I, all I do is just long for God's love to just s protect me through this next process, if you like. And, and most of the time, um, you know, you, you, you can work your way through things quite rapidly like that. Sometimes, though, recently I've noticed that when spirits have been attracted to me when I'm working through an emotion, that it's actually helped me work through the emotion even more. By, by their emotion heightening my own emotion and I just allow that to occur whereas most people who would talk to you about mediumship and, and those kind of things would say to surround yourself with some kind of protection barrier. My feelings are that actually nowadays I'm finding having spirits connected with me dealing with certain emotions has actually helped me get even more into that emotion and in, in the end helped me connect with the underlying causal emotion much easier. So the key again is to not be afraid that spirits are going to surround you and this is why today we're going to deal with that fear as well. Yeah, so. You want to say? I was just going to say for Jen that, that it may not be that it's that she's had an experience when she's younger that where something has happened when you've been quite still and that's what, and so it's not really the fear of the spirits anymore, it's just the, that causal emotion. Yeah, the fear of experiencing that causal emotion. Yeah. 